In order to help with some of my research, I accepted a thermal IR camera from TopDon. I'm not paid to show you this camera, I'm not trying to sell it, and I don't profit from the sales of it. There's nothing like being able to actually see heat, which is usually invisible. Since I'm currently building several thermal storage systems in my solar workshop, I really wanted to see for myself any differences in behavior between fine sand, coarse sand, and also water. Amazingly, you can see the heat developing on the surface of the water. That's something I've never been able to see before. Water has a much higher specific heat than sand. This means that it easily accepts heat and also easily gives it away. After a while, you could see the heat coming out of the sand. The coarse sand on the right seems to be a little bit more likely to give out heat while it's also accepting heat due to the air spaces in between each grain of sand. From what I could see, the fine sand automatically stood out as being able to reach higher temperatures a little bit faster than the coarse sand, but the difference wasn't that much. The water, as expected, hesitated to lift its temperature because it's able to accept much more heat than the sand. Out of curiosity, I started stirring the water with a screwdriver to see what would happen. Much of the infrared heat that is visible is actually on the surface of the water, and you can see how it gets mixed in as soon as I start stirring it. It's becoming pretty obvious here that the fine sand on the left is just glowing a little hotter than the coarse sand on the right. Once again it appears that the fine sand on the left is holding on to the heat a little bit better than the coarse sand on the right. And later as the temperatures increase it's getting a little bit harder to tell the difference between the fine and coarse sand. 
and once again it's obvious that the water is able to hold a lot more heat at these temperatures than the sand. I figured that as the temperatures got higher, the differences between all three would become clearer and clearer, and I was right. I'm stirring up the water so I can get a better temperature measurement, because the hot water tends to sit at the top. So these are my findings after testing the fine sand, the coarse sand, and the water. Obviously the fine sand is reaching a higher temperature internally, that's the temperature on the bottom. The coarse sand obviously can't reach as high of a temperature because it has a lot of air spaces and it's got airflow in between the sand granules. The water, of course, doesn't really want to go much higher because it's very, very good at accepting heat, much better than sand, and so it, it can't really uh, achieve as high of a temperature as easily. It takes much more energy to get the temperature up on the water than it does the sand. Water is absolutely superior to sand for storing heat energy, thermal storage, at lower temperatures. As long as you don't boil the water, it can hold vastly more heat than the sand can ever hold. But sand has its own advantages. Water has its own advantages. Stay tuned for projects on this channel involving thermal storage using both sand as well as water and other methods as well, including thermochemical. If you like this video and you want to support my work, please consider subscribing, give it a thumbs up, and leave a comment if you have time. Thanks for watching, folks, and I hope to see you next time.